my name is Elaine and today I'm going to try something I haven't done before. I'm going to make a beer. Now I have brewed before. Uh, for the last year and a half I have been making mead and yeah, I've made quite a, quite a few varieties of mead but I've kind of gotten to a point where I want to try something different, kind of expand my horizon, so to speak. So today I thought I would make beer. What I have chosen to make is a blonde ale. Uh, I know it's not summertime. Blonde ale is best for summer, but hey, I figure it's, it's a good recipe to start with, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. After all, it's my universe. The ingredients that I am using is, well, first off, as you can see, I got my barley, barley malt. Now, barley, barley malt, what I have is a four pounds of Marius Otter, four pounds of Pilsner malt. Um, I also have a pound of Vienna malt and a half a pound of Victory malt. Uh, I picked these up at a, a, a local uh, brew store over at the, the Bearded Brewer. Brewer, uh, pretty good place. I, I, I like picking up my supplies there, and uh, he was able to put all these in, these more uh, molds together. And, and actually crack the barley and, and mill it for me and blend it all. So it's all in one bag, ready to go. Uh, um, in addition, there's the hops that go into the, to the mead. Uh, and that, that kind of adders, adds a little uh, bitterness. So what I have is Tetnagers, I guess. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but that's what it looks like. I also have Simicol and Cascade, Cascadia, or Cascade pellets. Okay, those are uh, the, um, the Tetanag. I plan on uh, hopping the, the mixture for 60 minutes. The other two I will be hopping about 10 minutes before the end. Uh, that way, I, you know, don't overdo it on the hops because this is a this is a blonde ale, not a, not an IPA. At least I hope it don't turn into an IPA. And then finally, to kind of top it off with, in, in dry hopping, I am going to try some Citra hops. Uh, and this will be in the dry hopping stage after it's all brewed. Probably the last couple of days, two or three days of fermentation. I'll toss it in, in, in the fermenter and uh, let it do its magic and stuff. And basically just to kind of give it a nice uh, citrus flavor, I guess, or fruity flavor without adding bitterness is, is the goal on that one. Um, the yeast, I had hoped to be able to find some um, 1318 London Ale uh, 3 yeast at the, at the brew store. He didn't have any of that, so after much discussion with the, the bearded brewer there, uh, we decided that, you know, or I decided I wanted to try this verdant uh, yeast. It's really kind of an IPA yeast, but uh, I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, you know, it's, the yeast is not going to make it an IPA, it's the hops, the hoppiness that really makes it an IPA and stuff. So, so I give the uh, give this yeast a try and see how it works out. He's never tried it, so he wasn't sure how how it, what kind of flavors it adds to it. So it's it's kind of an experiment really on this particular yeast uh, to see how well it does. Um, now that's going to be the process. I'll kind of step through it as I go. So here we are at the stove. The next step in the process is to steep the barley grains. Since they've been cracked already, and cracked and milled, milled uh, now, now we, we're in essence just going to make barley tea, if you will. 
So we have our sanitized pot right here. We're going to stick it on the stove and we'll put two gallons of water in it. Now normally I would just use uh, tap water, you know, filtered through a couple of filters, but I need to um, replace my filters and I haven't had a chance to do that. So my second choice then is to use just bottled water. I like to use Crystal Geyser. It seems to, to you know, do the best. You know, the others kind of provide a funny taste that I'm not that fond of. So Crystal Geyser, is, it is. So I'm going to put two gallons in the pot. And I did dip the bottles in the sanitization fluid, by the way. I figure I'll start with two gallons, like I said. And once I get the barley in here in, in the bag, then I will be able to see how much more, you know, how much room for water I have. But probably two gallons is probably what it's going to need. Here's my grain sack. I'm just going to kind of just set it in the pot and just kind of drape it over the edge. And I just pull it tight so I don't lose it in the in the in the thing. Uh, and then I'm just going to pour my my sack of of, of uh, barley in the uh, pour my sack of barley in the pot. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a lot of grain. I had no idea you use that much grain in, in brewing. And maybe it is too much. But the, the recipe that I found um, calls for this much grain. And in fact, uh, in the video, in the links below, I will provide a link to the website where I got this recipe. Okay. It's looking pretty good. Pour the rest of that in there. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to add some more water. Otherwise, it's just going to be a paste. All right, another bottle of water. So now we got three gallons of water in here and a whole bunch of grain. So I'm just gonna kind of stir this up a little bit. Make sure that it's not clumped up or anything. And then I'm gonna tie the sack off and then heat it up to about 170 degrees on the stove. We don't want it to get too hot, just, uh, just enough to steep it uh, a little bit, you know, uh, uh, basically turn it into a tea. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, uh, is, uh, and, and uh, one person that I had talked to recommend, recommended this way, rather than just trying to monitor it with a thermometer, I mean, I have the thermometer to get it to 170, but once it's at 170, rather than to continually turn the heat on and off on the stove, I'm just going to stick it in the oven, and the oven is set for 170 degrees. I mean, actually, I would like to keep this at 160, but 170 is the, the lowest my oven will go, and it'll be all right, I think, for this. It's all a big, grand experiment anyhow, right? I just want to keep it out of the way so that it don't get in the flame while I'm heating it up. And there we are. We've got the temperature on. So, like I said, once I uh, get it to 170, I'm going to put it in the oven. And once in the oven, I'm just going to let it steep for 60 minutes, okay? So I'm going to set a timer on my, on my, my, my phone, and uh, we'll see you in 60 minutes. Okay, got the grain sack out of the the the, ma uh, the mash or uh, the wort. That's what they call it. So we got the wort here. We're ready to add the hops to it. Um, what I'm going to start off with is the Tet Nager uh, hops. I'm going to put these in. 
and let the mixture boil for an hour. Uh, and for fi you know, 15 minutes into the boil, I'll add the other hops, but the total time will be an hour. So this is a one one ounce one ounce bag of hops, and so we're just going to dump the whole thing in. Just let that thing boil for, for an hour. And there we go. I tell you what though, uh, trying to get that grain bag out of there, we're talking nine and a half pounds of, of barley uh, malt, you know, 4.3 kilograms. That was a chore in itself. That uh, kind of ripped a little hole in the bag and uh, trying to get it out. but. But managed to get it out. Uh, uh, it took a little effort, but managed to get it there. I gotta need to figure out a better way to do it in the future, though. But uh, yeah, here we go. Our wort is boiling very nicely. The, the the smell of the the barley in the air and the smell of the hops is really just just a nice aroma. Um, speaking of aroma. I want to talk about the hops a little bit before it's time to put it in, which is just another couple of minutes away. The Tet Nager, the Tet Nager hops I put in here is, is what's boiling for the hour, and it's, that's the one that's going to mainly give the bitterness to contrast with the, the sweetness of the sugars from the barley. Um, on the package here, it says the aroma of the Tet Nager hops is spicy, and herbal, uh, and def I definitely smell that spicy herbal, uh, herbal uh, smell to it. Now, in comparison, uh, the hops that I'm going to be adding here pretty soon, these were one ounce packages, and I only need to add a half ounce from each package. So I've already uh, measured out and separated them and, and, and combined them into a bowl there, ready to dump in. But we have the uh, Cascade hops. Cascade hops, uh, and this is supposed to provide a floral and citrus aroma. Uh, the Simcoe hops that I have here is also have a, has uh, an aroma for citrus and piney, and the piney ought to be kind of an interesting flavor to add to this. Now these only get 10 minute boil compared to the Tetnager hops, uh, but uh, it should kind of help fill out the, uh, the, the notes of, of the beer quite well though. So it's just a matter, maybe another minute when the alarm goes off, we'll dump in the hops. I have my hops ready to go here. Now one thing of note, I did forget to put them in a the bag, so they're just boiling away. But I think it'll blend a little better. It just means it's going to be a pain for me to separate out the hops when I pour it into the fermentation container. So. The hops here will go in, boil for another 10 minutes. The next step would be to put it in, uh, set the pot into an ice bath to cool it down, get it down to room temperature. Because we want to ferment this around 65 to 70 degrees. So we want to kind of get the temperature of this wort down to near that area uh, so that we don't uh, destroy the yeast when we pitch the yeast into the, into the wort. So that's the main purpose of cooling it down. So we'll get it cooled down, and then we'll transfer it into the fermentation container, and then pitch the yeast. So probably, what, another minute now. All right, there we go. So, in goes the hops. All right, next we'll meet up uh, is when um, transferring from uh, the ice bath into the fermentation, or into the fermentation carboy. All right, we're getting down to the final step. I have my carboy here that will be used for fermentation. It's already been sanitized. The funnel is in place. The wort has been cooled down. I'm going to just transfer it over to here and then just pour it into the funnel. In the meantime, I have over here uh, my yeast, which is hydrating. And so once I get the wort poured into there, I'll uh, pitch the yeast, uh, top off with some water, then do a hydrometer reading, and we'll see what we got. And then we'll put a lid on it and put it away. So, let's uh, get to it.
this is a, a six gallon carboy. What my what I want to make is five gallons worth of uh, of beer. Uh, so we need a, a little bit of space in here to allow for the, the, the bubbling that will occur during fermentation. So we don't want it to, to bubble over. So I want to I want a sample. I want to get a sample of the uh, the wart. Make get a specific gra gravity measurement, and that'll give us the starting specific gravity. If we take our starting specific gravity, and then when we uh, you know the starting specific gravity kind of gives us an idea of sweetness, uh, and then if we subtract the ending specific gravity, then that gives us alcohol content. So that's what we're interested in. So I have my hydrometer. I'm just going to put it in there. I want to be able to float it. Just barely starting to float. Okay, there we go. Getting blind here. I have to have not only my reading glasses but a magnifying glass to read this sucker. Point zero one eight. Well, seems kind of low to me, but maybe that's because I'm used to making meads, which should have a higher alcohol content. Okay, so I have my uh, airlock. I'm just stick it in a cork here. Plug it into the carboy. Something I like to do instead of putting water, because you know, uh, you know, certain things can swim through water. Uh, I like to uh, put uh, uh, whiskey or brandy, just whatever I got laying around. I kind of, I kind of shy away from putting the uh, the sanitizing liquid in there. I just not, you know, too comfortable with that. So a bit of whiskey in there to the line. And this is now ready to go into a dark place for two weeks uh, to let it ferment. Uh, three days before uh, the end of fermentation, or about halfway into the second week, I will put the uh, next uh, group of hops for dry hopping. And then after that, it'll be time to uh, bottle it. So. There we go. All right, hello. Uh, about six, seven weeks ago, I, I started some uh, uh, American Blonde Ale. Uh, bottled it about three weeks ago. And so now we're ready to taste it. Um, now when I made it, uh, you know, the specific gravity was such, it kind of indicated that it's going to be low, low alcohol level. But it, it seemed to look good, kind of smelled good when I bottled it. So, are you ready to give this a try? Yes. Yep. All ready. right. So, let me just give this thing a pop here. You want to pour yourself a little bit there? Sure. Okay. Okay, so, 
kind of looking at this, my initial impressions is uh, seems to have a, a decent head of beer on there, you know. So um, that that indicates uh, that it seems to to go through the carbonation process uh, pretty well. So uh, and also too, just kind of looking at it, it's nice and clear, a lot clearer than I expected it to be. I expected it to be a little bit muddier than this, but uh, but it's looking pretty good. So. See if I give it a sniff here. Actually, a little bit of a hoppy smell to it, but not bad. I mean, it's still is something that's within what I would call a nail, you know, and not a and not an IPA though. It's not like that. It's definitely a kind of a light, hoppy smell to it. Uh, so. A little taste. Hmm. It's actually pretty good, Sarah. Not what do you think? Not bad. Yeah? Not bad. A little bit more on the pale end, I think, for uh, for my taste. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that this is probably pretty decent stuff for a for a, a blonde ale. So. Uh, it seems like it turned out. So I may have to share this with some of my friends and see if they agree or if they disagree. Uh, so anyhow, cheers to everyone. And this is Christmas Eve, so cheers. Merry Christmas to all.